Students, families, counselors, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We've got six great colleges joining us for this session. And before we get started, I did wanna cover a few housekeeping notes for us as a team. First and foremost, you're encouraged to ask questions of the panelists via the Q&A button that you see in your screen. You can send those questions in, they get sent just to our panelists and they'll work to answer the question during the session and at the conclusion of the session as well. If you have a general question, you can ask it and all six of the institutions will be responding to you. So what's uh, campus life like on campus? All six of them can reply to you. If you've got a very specific question, hey, Reed College, tell me about your biology program. Uh, Reed College will then reply to you directly as well. So make sure you use that Q&A to ask your questions. You do not need to wait for your institution that you are here for to be presenting to ask questions. The representatives are here for the duration of the session, all 45 minutes, so you are encouraged to ask your questions at any point. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off. We cannot see or hear you, so any questions you have, make sure you just type them in through the Q&A. This is hour two of the three-hour college fair for this evening, and there's also a three-hour college fair tomorrow as well with additional institutions. We encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash Minnesota and check out the next hour of sessions and also check out the sessions for tomorrow. And finally, we are recording this session and all of the sessions. Those recordings will be posted on the strivescan.com slash Minnesota website very shortly after and uh, available for you to view uh, at, at your leisure. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Grace from Reed College, who's going to kick things off today. Grace, take it away. Perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Grace Fisher. I'm an Associate Dean of Admission at Reed College. Um, and we are in beautiful Portland, Oregon. Um, I don't have slides, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about what you need to know about what's different about Reed um, and why we do things that way and what that might do for you as a student um, and for that transformational college experience that uh, we all hear so much about. Um, key things to know about Reed, we're a small liberal arts and sciences college. Uh, we have about 1,500 students. We're in a part of the city of Portland that's um, a little bit quieter, but a 15 to 30 minute drive slash bus ride, depending on where you wanna go and how you wanna get there. Um, so we've got your scenic, um, you know, lawns and everything, but we're also close, close enough to the city to make good use of it. Um, and the reason students come to read is they love learning and they want to be around other people who love learning as much as they do. We are really trying to pull people together from all over the country and all over the world who are really excited about ideas and want to spend four years talking about those ideas with each other and with their professors. Um, our classes are about 15 people at the, uh, at the larger end. Um, and at Reed, you're not just coming to Reed to sit in a classroom and have knowledge given to you. Um, we are all about active participatory learning. And that's uh, both you and your classmates working together to try to understand things, but also you and your professors. Um, we are really well known for having extraordinarily close relationships between students and faculty. We all go by first names. So your professors are, you know, Kara and Poncho, which is a bit of an adjustment, but I think really helps set the tone. Um, and every student is going to get to work one on one with a professor all throughout their senior year to do an individual project um, that we call the senior thesis. So you're really building towards this moment of, of research, of proving that you know your subject super well, both to yourself and to the outside world. Um, so really intellectually motivated people who love learning, that's one feature of Reed. A different grading system. At Reed, um, instead of letter grades, um, you have letter grades, you have a traditional college transcript, but um, in your day-to-day -day life, you're not looking at your grades. They're not written on your homework. Instead, you get lots of comments. So your learning experience is really focused on what are you doing well and what can you do better? And I think for a lot of students, that's a really exciting thing to, that's very different from their high school experience. Um, finally, in terms of our community, the things I wanna highlight, um, besides being a small college in the context of a larger city and having access to all of the fun things in Portland, Oregon, um, and the nature that's quite nearby, um, including a ski cabin, if you like, if you like snow sports. Um, 
our campus community is also focused on, uh, we, we have this bedrock principle called the honor principle where every student is agreeing to basically do the right thing, even when no one's watching. And that creates a special community of people who are uniquely devoted to um, uh, uh, being thoughtful about how their actions impact people around them, um, who are thinking about the health of their community as a whole. And I think for a lot of students, that's a big draw. Um, we're also known for having um, a really inclusive student culture, um, so focused on inclusion that every student group is open to everyone, which means we don't have NCAA varsity sports and we don't have fraternities and sororities. Our student life is instead students coming together around stuff that they're really into and wanna share with their friends, whether that's rugby or Dungeons and Dragons or going thrifting or um, you know, identity-based groups, um, but students sharing those passions with one another. Uh, some of the academic programs we're most well known for, our biggest programs are biology and biochemistry, psychology and English. So we're really evenly split between science, social science and humanities. Um, we also are, even some of our smaller departments are really quite famous, including um, math, philosophy, um, classics, things like that. Uh, we have a very strong visual art program, um, very strong physics program. And all of these programs are setting students up for life beyond read, um, whether that is in the professions. Here's again where we benefit from being in a city. You have access to internships and a lot of alums and um, seeing how does my education work outside class. Um, and a lot of our students go on and get more education. We ha have the fourth highest rate of PhD production in the country. So um, if you love learning so much that you want to keep doing it the rest of your life, that is definitely something that we're setting you up for. Um, if all of this sounds exciting, uh, I have even more good news, which is that we are test blind next year. So um, we will not be using SAT or ACT scores in our admission process. Um, and our financial aid process is one in which we guarantee to meet full demonstrated need. So whatever it takes to get your family um, from what you can afford to contribute and the cost of attendance, that's your financial aid package. And with that, I will turn it over to our next presenter. Thanks very much. Great, thanks so much, Grace, for sharing that information. Next up, we do have uh, Regent University and uh, they are welcome to start their presentation now. Go ahead and take it away, Regent. All right, hello everyone. Uh, please bear with me if I have a little bit of a coughing fit. I do have a cold right now, so just bear with me. Uh, my name is Bridget. Um, I'm joined here with my colleague Mackenzie on the back end. He'll be answering questions and sharing the slide. Um, we are so excited to be here to talk to you a little bit about Regent, um, assuming that a lot of you guys probably haven't heard of us before um, being from a different area of the country. Um, so we're a four year private Christian university and we're located in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And we also have a ton of different online programs as well. Total, we have about 11,000 students at Regent, but about 4,400 of them are undergraduates who are either taking classes um, online, living on campus, or maybe commuting to the campus from the local area. Our students do represent all 50 states, uh, 90 different countries, and 40 denominations, so you can definitely say we have a quite diverse population. Um, here you can see the average test scores and the GPA for the first year um, class profile. At Regent, we do look at the student holistically, and we consider each student as an individual. Um, we also take into account their extracurricular, the difficulty, difficulty of their classes, and then other information that they submit with their application, whatever they choose to disclose. Um, you will also see the ACT and SAT scores listed here, but keep in mind that we are test optional this upcoming year. I know that's a big challenge for seniors right now. And we encourage all students to submit test scores if you have them, because that can set you apart for different scholarships as well. So here at Regent, uh, we're an award-winning regionally accredited liberal arts university, and we have achieved this for over 40 years. Um, for the past nine years in a row, we've also been recognized by the US News and World Report for offering the best online bachelor's degree in Virginia. Um, I'm super proud of this because that is competing against larger universities such as UVA and Virginia Tech in our area. 
Um, this is also a huge benefit for our students now more than ever, especially in this new virtual world uh, that we live in. And it's really great for students who are seeking more flexibility when it comes to pursuing their college degree. So we've curated a comprehensive curriculum overall for which we are only, we're one of only 23 universities in the country to receive an A rating. Um, and then you also see on the slide that we have 90% of our faculty have the highest degree in their discipline. Um, and most of them actively work in their fields still. So that gives you a lot of real world experience to learn from. Lastly, our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. Um, so this means you'll have a smaller classroom size, which is pretty great. The small classroom dynamic allows our students to build lasting relationships with their peers, um, receive more personalized instruction from their professors. And we love to say at Regent that you'll never get lost in big lecture halls like you see in the movies. Um, okay, so on campus tuition, uh, we realize that figuring out finances is a huge factor in which school you choose to go to. Um, so at Regent, we're committed to making our education affordable. We actually rank in the top 5% of the most affordable private Christian colleges and universities in the country. 86% um, of our undergraduate students receive some sort of aid. Um, and we also have a number of institutional opportunities for aid like scholarships. So we encourage students to fill out the uh, FAFSA and take advantage of the federal aid to let us know more information about you and your financial needs. Um, you can also visit the website to access what we call our net price calculator. This is interactive. Um, you just type in all the information that applies to you and it'll pop out the um, net price net price for you and your tuition specific to your circumstances. Online tuition rates. Um, so you might be a student that prefers the, the online learning experience on your own schedule. Um, tuition in this case is determined specifically by course load. So if you're a full-time student and you're taking at least 12 or more credits, per semester, there's a rate and then same with, um, or and that's a little bit different than on campus. Um, and you can see those here. <clears throat> All right, so I, I always like to say that Regent is your one-stop shop when it comes to education. Uh, we offer over 135 different programs of study from associate's degrees all the way up through doctorates. Um, and then for those students who desire, desire to expand their knowledge using a more classical approach, we also have an honors college. Um, and that offers a challenging curriculum and collaborative environment to foster knowledge, character, and skills. All right, so we have a ton of different resources at Regent. Um, we offer our students many different resources that are specifically made to ensure their success. Um, so whether you live on campus, whether you commute, whether you study online, these all can apply to you. Um, my personal favorite is the Office of Career and Talent Management. Um, so that is where you can get practice with your resumes, um, practice with interviewing skills, and get hooked up with job opportunities for internships and externships. All right, so we also understand that when you go to college, you're looking for more than the academic experience, although that is the largest reason why you go to university. Um, we understand uh, we have over 55 different student-led organizations. So that's everything from things like surf club to dance club, um, art club and theater. Um, if we don't have an organization that you're interested in, it is a pretty easy process to create one. Um, we also do have collegiate athletics. If you're interested in participating in that, we are NCCAA division one. Um, and then we have a state of the art performing arts center where students can either watch or participate in several productions throughout the year. Um, if you are interested in a military career or military experience in developing that leadership experience, we also have ROTC, a Naval Preparatory Program, and Marine PLC as well. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely reach out to us. All right, so like I mentioned, Regent is located in coastal Virginia Beach. Um, sorry, that was my timer. Only a short 20 minutes. Um, we are pretty close to places like the Outer Banks and Washington, D.C. as well. And I will stop here so I don't go over my time, but there is the application website on the screen. Thanks so much, Bridget, for sharing that information and staying nice and on time. Next up, we've got Miles from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Um, so Miles, go ahead and grab screen share. And uh, as you are getting ready, a reminder to students, uh, you are welcome to send your questions in via that Q&A button throughout this session. And Miles, go ahead and take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Miles Duna, and I am the Assistant Director of Diversity and International Recruitment at St. Mary's University of Minnesota. And I'm going to talk a little bit about our undergraduate campus down in Winona. So let's get started. 
So a little bit about us, we are a private liberal arts college and what that means is that we expect students to take a variety of uh, classes in different subjects so that they have a wide breadth of information alongside their major. We just think that's really important. Um, we are also Roman Catholic, that's our religious affiliation identity. However, we have students from all over the religious and spiritual spectrum and we really welcome all students uh, for who they are, no matter where they are religiously or spiritually. Last but not least, we are LaSallian, and that refers to St. John Baptist de LaSalle, who is one of our patronesses. Um, he existed in 17th century France, and his whole goal in life was to make um, education accessible to as many people as possible. We take that one step further in the 21st century by trying to make uh, college as affordable and also uh, socially and, um, and uh, just all over holistically attainable to as many people as possible, especially those from historically underrepresented communities. So we have a pretty large campus of 450 acres, but um, our campus is actually pretty compact as far as buildings go. Um, we have 85% of our students living on campus. So if you are looking for that traditional college feel, you will find that here at St. Mary's. We do have 10 plus miles of trails, trout stream, disc golf, and cross country skiing. If you are an outdoors person, I'm an avid indoors person myself. So I enjoy that from the window inside my temperature controlled office. Um, I, we are within walking distance of restaurants. So if you are somebody who likes a little bit of variety or you get tired of on-campus food easily, you can walk about a quarter to half mile down the block to three restaurants nearby. Otherwise you can take Winona Transit if you'd like to get a ride into town and don't have access to a car. Next we are, as I mentioned earlier, located in Winona, Minnesota. Winona itself has a population size of around 26,600, but that grows to around 37 to 38,000 because we have three colleges in town. It's a nice blend of both residential and collegiate, and I like that a lot myself. Um, some fun things to do besides outdoor recreation is you could go to local cafes. If you like um, getting, if you like going to coffee shops or local restaurants, you can do that pretty easily. Also, we have a theater in town. So if you'd like to catch whatever's exploding in a theater near you, you can do that as well. We are a very accessible town because we are a crossroads from a lot of other um, larger cities or towns. We're two hours away from the Minneapolis St. Paul metropolitan area. We are about 40 minutes away from Rochester, Minnesota, about 30 minutes away from La Crosse, Wisconsin, and about four and a half hours away from Chicago, Illinois. We are very well known for three things. Our business, natural sciences, and education program. We do offer 40 majors though to students. Some of our other popular majors include psychology, uh, criminal justice, theater, music, uh, digital graphic design, uh, journalism. All of those are pretty popular. 100% of our, of our class are taught by professors. I believe around 95% of our professors hold the highest degree in their field. We also have a pretty small class size and a pretty small student to faculty ratio. We have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. First, and we really, really appreciate the fact that students get the chance to get to know their professors and their colleagues, their, their peers pretty easily because of that. We do expect students to also be involved, not expect, it's not mandate, but we encourage students to be involved on campus outside of the classroom. 65% of our students participate in student activities committee of some sort, and then also student senate, as well as campus ministry and other volunteer opportunities. A handful of our students also choose to study abroad for a semester or for just a few weeks. Some of our most popular study abroad programs include Sevilla, Spain, England, and also Rome, Italy. We do have a lot of professional development opportunities as well too. So if students want to schedule mock interviews or have someone look at their resume or network or have someone look over their cover letter, they can do all that so that they're prepared for graduate school or whatever job force or internship um, opportunities available to them as well too. We do also have 50 clubs and organizations. So even though we are a small university, we do have a wealth of experience for students. And if there's something that a student wants that's not uh, readily available already, they can always create a new club of their own. We're also an NCAA Division III uh, institution, so we have quite a few sports that students can participate in. 32% of our students are student athletes, so that is a part of who we are. About a third of our students participate, but we also have intramural sessions available to students and 10 club sport opportunities as well. If you like what you heard, if, you've if something has piqued your interest, we do encourage you to apply during your senior year. Uh, we, do encourage, we do require an application of some sort. That can be a common application or the St. Mary's institutional application. We accept either one. We also require that you send us your official transcripts from high school, and if you've taken any college courses, those as well too. And also we ask that you submit an essay, and it can be on any topic of your choosing, just as long as, you're, as, long as it's an original work and you're proud of it and it's been spell checked, we'll accept it. Last but certainly not least, we do offer the option of sending in letters of recommendation. You can submit a resume and uh, you can also submit ACT or SAT scores. However, we are test optional. 
So if you've liked what you've heard, I do encourage you to get in touch with me. Um, you can either email me or ask uh, questions in the chat box. But thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Miles, for sharing that information on St. Mary's University. Next up, we've got South Central College and John Harper, go ahead and grab screen share. And uh, once you do so, we can get you started for your presentation. Students, a reminder as John Harper is getting ready that you can use that Q&A and ask your questions of the representatives throughout the duration of the session. John Harper, I can see your, your notes. You may want to switch over to a different- Again? Uh, Man. Yes. That seems to be happening time. a lot. I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but Zoom has um, not been my friend as of late. Give me one moment here. Okay, there we go. So students send in those questions of the institutions. Uh, you don't need to wait for your institution to send your questions. It is not letting me share the screen. Go ahead and uh, try taking over from me one more time. All right. All right. As uh, actually, we're going to move up. Looks like we're actually. Are we up? Can you see it? We can see it. Yep. I can see your notes, but we're, uh, we're we can see your screen at least. So go ahead and take it away. Okay. Let's go like this. It shouldn't show any of the other notes if it's playing from the beginning. Okay. So welcome to South Central College. Are you seeing the take a virtual tour or is it just showing? Just the start, John, uh, start your success screen. John, oh. just hit the from beginning. We're just, just hit the from beginning. I, 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 I did. Oh. Hmm. You know what, that's okay. I've memorized this uh, presentation long enough to just kind of go with it. So welcome to South Central College. My name is John Harper. I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, but I'm also the Interim Director of Admissions. And today with me, I have one of my great colleagues, our prospective student, uh, student coordinator, Edel Fernandez, who will be able to answer your questions in the chat box. Um, South Central College is located in Southern Minnesota, and we actually have two campuses, but we're one college. We have one campus that's located in Faribault, Minnesota, which is about 35 minutes away from the metro area, Minneapolis, uh, Burnsville, and Bloomington, as well as one of our other campuses that's located in North Mankato, which is about 90 minutes south of the metro. Um, if you've heard of the city of Mankato, South Central College is just seven minutes away over the river from where our institutional partners are at Minnesota State University, Mankato. We have about 4,500 students that attend our college and that's in between uh, part-time, full-time, uh, veterans and um, a lot of different students that choose to come to our college. We have about 26% students of color and we have a 53 to 47 male to female ratio. One of the great things about South Central College is that we actually have 50 technical career and professional programs. So whether you wanna go into nursing, dental assisting or something in the health science, we have something for you. We also offer things that are in early childhood education and family services. And we have things that lead into education as well. Advanced manufacturing as it relates to welding, HVAC, civil engineering, technology, business accounting, marketing, you name it. We also offer an associate of arts degree and we offer four different transfer pathways for students that want to come and knock out their generals as well as take their general education and transfer to a four-year university. Uh, some of the universities that you're going to hear today are actually some of our institutional partners and we'd love to have you here. One of the great things about South Central College is all the different value and choices and opportunities that we provide for you. We offer post-secondary enrollment options. So for those of you that are sophomores, juniors, and seniors, we highly encourage you to think about getting that free college credit and that college education while you're in high school. We have about 10 or 11 students that will be graduating this spring sometime in the middle of May with their two-year associate degree and or a technical career. Um, one of the great things about our college also is that our, um, I don't want to say price comparison, but our tuition differential, right? On average, you're looking at about $5,600 per academic year, right? So that's not per, per semester, but that's academic year total, right? And then if you're looking at some of the other colleges, we're definitely one of the more um, less expensive institutions in the state of Minnesota. We give out about over 
$500,000 in scholarships. And our scholarship application is really easy and simple to get to. It just asks you for your first name, your last name, where you're from, what is it you wanna accomplish at South Central College, and bam, you're good to go. We're also an open access institution, which means we have no application fee, we have um, no, we don't require anything for the most part to get in. We want to be a stepping stone for any of our students or for a stepping stone for students that want to get into a technical career as soon as possible. So all you have to do is submit your application and you will be automatically admitted into South Central College. From there, our academic advising team and registration team will work with you and partner with you to make sure we have access to your high school transcripts and make sure that we can place you in the necessary classes that you need to be successful here at South Central College. Um, we also just launched our eSports team, right? And so that's very, very exciting for our students. We have a 93% job placement rating across the board out of all of our 50 technical and professional career programs. And so if you're interested in coming to South Central College, we're a smaller institution, a two-year community and technical college, we would love to have you. Excellent. Thank you, John Harper, for sharing that information and, and doing it so on the fly with the technology issues. We appreciate your flexibility there. Uh, next up, we've got Haley from uh, the University of Iowa. Go ahead and grab a screen share from me, Haley. And uh, when you're ready, go ahead and start your presentation. All righty, perfect. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Haley, and I am the Minnesota Regional Admissions Counselor for the University of Iowa. Uh, I am one of our seven kind of admission counselors that are based regionally. So even with COVID aside, I live um, kind of full time and work remotely for Iowa in the Twin Cities area. I've been out there for about two and a half years. Uh, yeah, two and a half years now, almost three. So I always like to mention that at the beginning for any of you who are maybe juniors or um, have Iowa on your radar. While we can't necessarily get in person right now, hopefully further on down the road, you will have me in your backyard. I won't have to make that trip to Iowa City to make that connection. So with that, we'll go ahead and kind of dive right in. So the University of Iowa is a large public four-year university located in Iowa City, Iowa. So that's going to be about a four and a half hour drive from the Twin Cities. Now, when you first see this photo, it may make campus look really large and rather overwhelming, but I assure you, once you're in Iowa City and kind of walking around navigating the space, it's definitely a lot more manageable to get around. So as you can see, kind of in the upper area of the page where my cursor is hovering over, that is the Iowa River, and that's really how we organize things. So everything above the river is our west side of campus. This has the University of Iowa Hospital and Clinics, which is one of the largest teaching hospitals in the United States. So if you are interested in medicine or health sciences, Iowa is definitely a great campus to keep on your radar. It's got some of our graduate colleges, so College of Medicine, College of Dentistry, Law, and so forth a few residence halls, and then also our athletic facilities. So Kinnick Stadium for football, Carver Hawkeye Arena for basketball, volleyball, um, wrestling, those sort of things. And then everything below the river is our east side of campus. This is your primary undergrad campus. We say generally about 95% of your time, um, at least as an undergrad, will be spent on this east side. Now, right in the middle of the page, you can see these five buildings. This makes up the Pentecrest or our quad area. This is where students will hang out in between classes, play spike ball, grab a cup of coffee, um, study, lay out, catch up with friends. It really is kind of the heartbeat of campus. Now, if you look at the four big buildings surrounding that old Capitol and that gold dome, that makes up some of our main academic buildings where you'll have yourself uh, lectures, discussion classes, labs, different courses within those buildings. Now to the left of the photo, while it's off the page and you can't quite see it, that's where you'll find our College of Engineering, College of Education, the University Library and our Rec Center. Off to the right, you see things like our Student Union just off the river, College of Business and some residence halls. Now, if you can imagine with me, you're standing right here in the center of campus, you follow this long sidewalk down to the bottom of the screen, cross the street, and on your left-hand side of the photo, you see the beginning of downtown Iowa City. Um, that's something I really love and really kind of, kind of like to highlight when I speak about Iowa is what we call that town and gown relationship. Town referring to downtown Iowa City, gown relaying, relaying to um, graduation gown, cap, kind of that university. They really grew up together. So not only will you have everything going on on campus, but just across the street, you have our great downtown district with restaurants, shops, bookstores, boutiques, 
Many of them are alumni owned. So while you will find, you know, your Staples, Chipotle, Subway, Jimmy John's, all of those, you're also going to find really unique um, and authentic local to Iowa City places. Now, as we focus in on who makes up our Hawkeye family, we've got about 25,000 total undergraduates, just around 30,000 or so when you factor in our graduate students. This slide is a little bit outdated, so I do apologize, but it's honestly right about a 50-50 split for in-state, out-of-state residents, a little more uh, Iowa residents than out-of-state, about a 6% international and around a 24% minority representation. We've got students coming from all 50 states and over 100 different countries, so even though it is kind of Midwest Iowa, uh, it really is a melting pot and you're going to have students coming from all over the world, not only learning from the person at the front of the room, but also the person to your left and your right. Now we don't have a required GPA or ACT to apply, so I provide this here merely as an average just to give you kind of a rule of thumb. Average ACT is going to be about a 3.7 on a 4.0 scale and then around a 26, 27 ACT. Again, this is just the average 50% of our students will be above that and 50% will be below. Really quick overview of the application. You can apply online as early as August of your senior year. Um, basically, it's a math formula. You're gonna plug in your ACT or SAT score, your GPA, which can be weighted or unweighted, and then the number of core courses that you took throughout high school. So that would be English, math, science, history, and world language. Add all that together and you get what's called an REI score. Um, we use that to kind of determine your admissibility. We are test optional this cycle and next. So if you don't wanna take the ACT or SAT, or you don't, it's not accessible to you, you're welcome to submit a personal statement instead. Um, but we can definitely chat more about the application and some of these logistics if we can connect one-on-one. -on -one. Now, just highlighting academics real briefly, average class size is about 24 students. So while we are a large school, you will find that your academics are actually quite small in size, intimate, close connections with professors. Got about a 15 to 1 student to faculty ratio in over 200 different areas of study um, to explore. Study abroad, research, all definite things that you can do outside of your classroom to apply what you're learning. Student involvements, we've got over 600 different student orgs ranging from academic focused to kind of hobby based interest. So many things that you can kind of tap into those passions outside of your classroom experience. We are in the Big Ten Division I NCAA Conference. We've got 24 teams that compete at that level. We also have club sports and intramural sports. And then um, a great and vibrant performing arts community as well with our Hawkeye Marching Band, visual performing arts that tour groups that come through, small student-ran intimate shows, lots of things that you can dive into there. Uh, I didn't start my timer, so I'm panicking a little bit that I'm run over time. So I'm just going to skip this for the sake of being courteous of everybody. Uh, but just know that if you'd like to talk deeper about anything about the University of Iowa, please feel free to connect with me. Like I said, my name is Haley, and I'm the Minnesota Regional Admissions Counselor. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much, Haley. Uh, next up, we do have the University of Wisconsin Stout, and I'd ask Aaron to grab a screen share. I will also encourage all of my panelists uh, to use that chat and chat out your email address and contact information to all of the students. Um, so please send out your email address to the students uh, that are attending here. And uh, next up, we've got Aaron from University of Wisconsin Stout. Go ahead and take it away. And I can see your notes up. Oh, there we go. Yep, you're good. All right. Awesome. Thanks for joining today. My name is Erin Kinsala, and I am the admissions counselor for the Minnesota Territory. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about UW-Stout. We are located in Menominee, Wisconsin. We're a four-year public university. We have just under 8,400 students on our campus. Most of our students are undergraduate. And then we do have about 14% of our student population are graduate students. Our campus is about 124 acres and it's a very compact campus. So all of our academic and administrative buildings surround our freshman and sophomore residence halls. Your average class size is between 20 and 25 students and your average lab size is around 18 to 20 students. Our student to faculty ratio is around 18 to one. All of our students are taught by academic instructors. So we do have just over 45 majors at UW-Stout. Um, we really specialize, you can see the six career clusters on my slide here. We do really specialize in art and design and graphics. We actually have the largest school of art and design in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Um, we have majors like graphic design, game design and development, 
interior design, industrial design, studio art. We also really specialize in science, engineering, and math. Most of our engineering programs are all 100% employment within six months of graduation. We have engineering programs like mechanical engineering, manufacturing engineering. We're actually one of very few universities in the whole US that has plastics engineering. We also have a computer and electrical engineering program and a packaging major that you're gonna find that's really unique to the Midwest. We also have great majors in education, business and management. We're actually eighth in the world for hotel, restaurant, and tourism management. We have a really awesome internship opportunity at Walt Disney World. We have really great human science programs like psychology, human development, family studies, dietetics, health, wellness, and fitness. And then we also have IT and communications. One of our more popular programs right now is computer science. So cybersecurity, coding, um, game design is another uh, popular concentration underneath computer science. Now, over half of our majors aren't offered anywhere else in the UW system in Wisconsin. We're also very transfer friendly for students. So if, if students um, go to a two year first or go to a community college and want to transfer to Stout, we are very transfer friendly. So a couple things that make us really unique is we are um, one of around 126 universities in the United States is a polytechnic university. And so what that means for a student is you're going to learn by doing and you're going to get a hands on experience. So we're very career focused. We have a really high employment rate. We have around 98.8% of our students are employed within six months of graduation. We also require an internship or co-op before a student can graduate, which also lands in a full time job for a lot of our students. We offer a very comprehensive curriculum that prepares our graduates for professional careers. We also are the only laptop campus in the state of Wisconsin. So um, part of your tuition and fees, you're going to get a brand new computer with about four to $6,000 worth of software on it for you to be successful in the labs, the classroom, the lectures, and then also it's your own personal computer. We also have three times as many labs and we have classrooms on our campus. And then we work really closely with different businesses and industry to help students get these internships and full-time positions once they graduate. We actually host the largest career fair in the Midwest where about 600 employers come to our university to hire our students for those internships. We also have a lot of great opportunity for you to get involved. We do have a pick one campaign at UW-Stout. We have over 150 student organizations from anything to academic to professional, to cultural and identity groups, to Greek life, to spiritual opportunities. Um, we are a division three university. We have 18 varsity athletic sports. We have over 20 sports clubs. We also have intramurals. Um, we have service and volunteering options. We actually employ about 2000, uh, around 2,500 students to work on our campus. We have performing arts, we have military and veterans programs, LGBTQIA programs, and also leadership opportunities. So um, being in Wisconsin, uh, for a Minnesota resident, we have what's called reciprocity. So basically it's in-state tuition if you do choose to come to UW-Stout. So tuition and fees is about $10,300. We do have a two year live on requirement at UW-Stout. So all of our students, freshmen and sophomores are required to live in the residence hall. So about $7,600 there with your total, um, about 17,900, um, 18,000. Now everything's included included in our tuition and fees for um, uh, your tuition that you're paying. So the laptop and the software that I talked about is all included. Another big item that's included in our tuition and fees is textbooks, student activities, health services, counseling services, math and writing centers, tutoring services, technology services. We also have a bus transportation that goes anywhere around city limits of Menominee. So let's talk about next steps. Um, here at Stout, we take either the common application or the UW system application. Our application every year um, opens August 1st. So it'll be August 1st of 2021 this fall. Um, we have rolling admissions. So we do not have a deadline on our application. We are also ACT or SAT blind for the next cycle. So we will not require that. All we need for your application to be complete is the application and the high school transfer Script and we no longer have an application fee, so you can actually apply for free. So if you want to contact me, um, you can do that through the chat or ask any questions that you have. Thanks so much for joining today.
Great, thank you so much, Aaron, for sharing that information about University of Wisconsin Stout. Now I'm going to encourage all of my colleagues to uh, turn on their cameras and join me for a very brief uh, round robin question. We've got just a few minutes remaining. Um, so I'm going to pose a question to all of you and we'll go in the same order that you presented in. And the question I'm going to pose is, what is your favorite tradition on campus? So we'll start with Grace with Reed College. What is your favorite tradition on campus? Um, my favorite tradition is definitely um, Paideia, which is a yearly celebration before school starts for winter break, where students actually come back to school early and spend a week taking classes from each other. So people are teaching classes on whatever they're into, from why you should follow the German soccer league, which that's what I would teach, why chinchillas, like how to take care of pet chinchillas, why black holes are the coolest kind of star, you know, star formation systems, whatever it is. Um, and I, I love seeing what our students are really excited about and want to share. And I always learn some stuff. Awesome. We'll go next to Bridget from Regent University. What's your favorite tradition at Regent? Yeah, my favorite tradition at Regent is probably what we call commissioning, which is in addition to graduation when a student is ready to have their degree conferred. Um, their specific dean over their school will um, meet with them like one-on-one, -on -one, pray with them, um, and kind of send them off onto their way prior to graduation. So it's a really great one-on-one -on -one experience with your dean. Great. We'll go next to Miles at St. Mary's University of Minnesota. What's your favorite tradition there? Yeah, my favorite's called the Taylor Rich and Benefit Dance, and it's both a social function, but it's also a philanthropic function too. So students get dressed up and they go to this wonderful dance and the tickets, the money from the tickets actually is raised for someone in our community who has experienced some kind of a setback. So in years past, it's gone towards a kid who was battling leukemia and needed help paying his hospital bills and um, other, other philanthropic causes too. So it's nice to see people dance a night away, but also at the same time do something really important, which is a part of our mission at St. Mary's. Right. John Harper, favorite tradition at South Central College? You know, I think over the past five years, my favorite tradition is an event that we put on for new incoming students called National Technical Signing Day. Um, and it's basically a giant award, uh, scholarship award ceremony, right? So students that are entering into technical programs can sign up, they fill out the scholarship application. And at this uh, signing day, so to speak, not only do they receive a certain amount of money in scholarships, but they actually meet their faculty, meet their academic advisor, have the opportunity to register for their classes for the entire academic year and meet their futures employers. So over the past five years, it's been fun to watch, coordinate that event, and of course, uh, give away free money. Cool. Haley, favorite tradition at the University of Iowa? Yeah, so um, some of you may have heard of this. It got a lot of media attention kind of the first year that it was around, but it's called The Wave, um, and it has to do with some Hawkeye football games. So our, one of our largest student organizations is Dance Marathon. This is kind of a year-long philanthropic group of students that raises money for children with pediatric cancer. Their funds go to a variety of things, relief programs for families, medical treatments, research. I mean, you name it, these students are kind of um, funding for, for all good cause. So in the past years, we've raised over this past year, I think it was like $3.2 million or so that our students were able to give back. And that does stay directly in the Iowa City community. I mentioned kind of when I showed campus just on our west side, we have that University of Iowa Hospital and Clinics. There's a wonderful um, Stead Family Children's Hospital there on the very top floor from uh, floor to ceiling, there's glass windows and all of those rooms have kind of the bird's eye view looking over kind of aerial shot down into our football stadium. So on a Saturday game day at halftime, the announcer will, or after the first quarter, the announcer will say, all right, let's turn and wave to the kiddos. And as a group of 75,000 people, whether you're cheering for Hawkeyes or another school, you all take a moment of silence and kind of wave up to those kiddos and their families. So definitely a moment where you feel like something bigger than yourself. And that's called the wave. I love that tradition as well. Uh, next, we'll go to Aaron. Favorite tradition at the University of Wisconsin Stout? Ooh, I would say our Blue Ra. It's a huge pet, pet fest that we have for incoming students uh, about two days before classes start. It just gets them really excited. And we have some awesome speakers that come to that pet fest. So I would say, yeah, our Blue Ra. 
Excellent. Well, thank you all uh, college representatives for sharing this information on your institutions, students, counselors, families. Thank you for spending some time uh, to learn about these specific colleges. A reminder that there is another group of colleges presenting in the next hour, the C block. Uh, so we encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash Minnesota and sign up for additional institutions. These institutions and more will all be presenting tomorrow evening as well. So if there are schools that you missed because of concurrent sessions, or you just can't get enough about learning about the college uh, the colleges that are out there, we encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash Minnesota and check out those sessions as well. When you close this window, a very quick survey will show up and we do ask for your feedback on today's session. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Be well and have a great night. Bye-bye.